the United States is violating one of the most fundamental rights of all, the right to life. There's a large number of innocent civilians who are being killed, and that has to be reported. The majority of the secret drone strikes that have taken place have, we have always understood, been carried out by the Central Intelligence Agency. There is a lie hidden within that truth. <laughs> The trailer for the documentary Drone premiering today in New York City and Toronto. And speaking out together, the four former service members risk prosecution under the Espionage Act by an administration that's waged an unprecedented campaign against government whistleblowers. They also set their sights on a cornerstone of President Obama's national security policy, just as it threatens to escalate in the aftermath of the Paris attacks. After being elected to office on a platform of Iraq War opposition and avowed to bring the troops home, President President Obama has quietly expanded the drone war far beyond its size and lethality under President George W. Bush. Today in this Democracy Now! exclusive, these four war whistleblowers join us in their first extended broadcast interview. We're joined by Brandon Bryant and Michael Haas, who have spoken out to a certain extent before, both former sensor operators for the U.S. Air Force Predator Program. Stephen Lewis, a veteran of the U.S. Air Force, is also a former sensor operator for the Air Force Predator Program, and this week is speaking out for the first time. Also going public for the first time is Sean Westmoreland, a former Air Force technician who helped build a station in Afghanistan used to relay drone data. But first, I want to turn to Jesslyn Radak, National Security and Human Rights Director at the Government Accountability Project, former ethics advisor <laughs> to the U.S. Department of Justice. As an attorney, she's representing several former drone operators, including this group of four young men who are speaking out today. Jesslyn Radak, how much do they risk in speaking out on Democracy Now! today? Um, they're taking an enormous and very brave public risk in speaking out. Um, I have clients in the national security and intelligence communities who've done nothing more than tell the truth about some of America's darkest secrets, like torture and secret surveillance, and now, in this case, drones. And those clients, a number of them, have been prosecuted under the Espionage Act. And Edward Snowden, of course, another one, is living in exile, um, not because they've done anything wrong or even revealed classified information, which they're not here to do today, but because they have embarrassed the U.S. government. Um, all of these men, a number of them, half of them, have complained internally to no avail. They've gone through internal channels, and we're hoping that today, by going public, that this will have more of an influence in the debate, because somehow there's a complete disconnect between these terrorist attacks in Paris and elsewhere, and the fact that the drone program has fueled ISIS and al-Qaeda and a number of terrorist groups, and that really needs to be addressed. And I'd like to ask Brandon Bryan, we've had you on Democracy Now! a couple of years ago, uh, uh, and uh, uh, these guys here worked with you as well. Do you talk about the decision to come out as a group, uh, how you came to that, and why at this particular point? Um, well, you know, when I first started talking out about my experiences, it was more to get a bunch of stuff off my chest and to <clears throat> actually try to come clean with what I've done and, and reveal what exactly is going on. And I'm actually really honored to be with these gentlemen right here, is that um, I trust them, and this is their decision to come out, and um, I'm here to support them, because I've already been doing this for three years, and it's time that we just get a more, bigger coalition of people together to, to attack this issue. Why did you sign this letter, and what are you calling on President Obama to do? We want uh, the president to have more transparency in this issue, and we want the American people to understand exactly what's being done in their name. And I think that uh, all this fear and hatred that keeps going on and is just out of control, and we need to stop it somewhere. Uh, Michael Haas, I want to ask you, in terms of your experience uh, in, in the drone program and the culture uh, that the military basically allowed to flourish in, in the drone program, you've talked about uh, how your, your fellow service members talked about the children that they were, that they were targeting as well. 
Uh, yes, the, uh, the the term uh, "fun size terrorist" was used to uh, you know, just sort of denote children that we'd see on screen. What was it? Fun sized. Fun sized terrorists. Yes. Uh, other, you know, other terms we'd use would be cutting the grass before it grows too long. Uh, just doing whatever you can to try to to make it easier to kill whatever's on screen. It's uh, and the culture is that, that mentality is very much nurtured within the drone community because these. Every, every Hellfire shot is sort of lauded and applauded, and we don't really examine who exactly was killed, but just that it was an effective shot and the missile hit its target. When did you start to have questions? Uh, shortly after I became an instructor, and I started to see how much the mentality had shifted since I had been in. And the 11th hadn't really changed how they had trained their sensor operators from a, a basic level standpoint. The 11th is? The, uh, basic training squadron up at Creech, the, they train all the sensor operators. This is at Creech in Nevada? Yes. And and you were a, a, a video game uh, addict as you, as you were growing up. You, you talk about this this whole this whole uh, impact of sort of the video game approach to war. Uh, the, the the thing that makes uh, gamers a, a prime target for for this job field is that ability to just multitask and do a lot of things subconsciously and just sort of out of Reflex, and you don't really even have to think about it, which is, uh, you know, paramount to doing this job. But uh, a lot of it is uh, getting used to just seeing something on screen, killing it, and then going about your business as though you don't really, you don't really pay it a second thought. It was just an objective to be completed.